Thank you very much. Can you hear me? I somehow don't know whether this mic is working. You can? Okay, good. All right, um, thank you very much for having me. It's um, a really um, beautiful um, city and um, campus. I'm very uh, impressed. It's my first time to Ann Arbor, so uh, I'm very excited to uh, come here and uh, talk with you. Uh, some ideas I'm working on right now. Um, so, um, a lot of my um, previous research focused on um, trends and patterns of social differentials in aging, morbidity, and mortality. Um, I'm now moving on to the question of why these trends and patterns exist. So um, most generally, um, I take a life course and developmental um, approach to um, identify mechanisms at the most precise level of pathogenesis that are jointly affected by social uh, factors and physiological characteristics. So today, I'm introducing one research program along this line of um, questioning. So, um, about this, um, that women live longer than men uh, may be a well-known phenomenon, at least for demographers, um, but why women live longer than men is much less well understood. So the, um, it is one of those phenomena like aging that are so ubiquitous, uh, we barely notice them. Um, there um, is relatively little research at um, a mechanistic level using a comprehensive theoretical framework to um, understand um, male disadvantage in survival. So um, I propose an integrative social and biodemographic approach um, and um, introduce some uh, initial findings um, and from uh, analyses. So overview of the talk, um, I will um, first briefly review the state of knowledge um, about sex differences in mortality, what do we know and not know, um, and then identify gaps in this knowledge. So in this context, I argue that it is useful to revisit the old but powerful hypothesis that, bio uh, that biology plays a role. The question really is um, how exactly it does so. Um, I lay out a framework of research that um, um, in, uh, um, uh, and talk about how to integrate biology into social dem um, demographic models um, in population research. Um, and then um, I focus on the initial set of questions concerning physiological mechanisms um, underlying sex differences in mortality um, and their interconnections with social processes. And I uh, talked about three individual studies. Uh, the first is on sex differences in age trajectories of physiological dysregulation. Um, and then the second one links them to um, post-reproductive change in sex mortality gaps. Um, and then the third one zooms in on um, f uh, particular kind of uh, physiological pathways um, by which social relationship affect mortality and sex differences in these links. So um, beginning with the basic demographic pattern, uh, women um, have lived longer than men in virtually every time and every place we can identify. So this figure shows the historical pattern of life expectancy differences between men and women. In Sweden, one of the countries in the world that has the best mortality data. And so women have lived longer, um, outlived men in this country since records have been kept beginning in the mid 18th century in both um, absolute years of life expectancy and percentage difference. And then um, the difference um, is also widespread across countries of the world with the global average of female ex uh, excess of close to four years. And regardless of level of life expectancy, females live longer than males to variable degrees, uh, but this difference increases with increasing life expectancy. And um, this difference also exists in other species. So uh, this is an example uh, that shows in, ch in chimpanzees, um, which are our close primate relatives, um, females also outlive males. Um, and you can see the survival curve of females lying on top of males at almost every age in life. So um, the female longevity superiority is not some sort of human idiosyncrasy, but um, relatively widely observed in the animal kingdom. 
Um, so the puzzle uh, is simply that there are female advantages in survival and life expectancy across a number of different dimensions, time, space, and species, which dispel simple explanations uh, that are you know, particular to a specific time or place like smoking or access to nutrition and resources. Um, and also studies of sex health paradox. Um, uh, they have been able to explain the higher rates of female morbidity um, uh, rates um, and, ex and um, show that accounting for a number of factors, the sex difference in morbidity is in the same direction with the sex difference in survival. But then um, the question remains, oops, why is there a sex gap in mortality at all? So a large body of literature in demography, sociology, and epidemiology uh, um, has identified a myriad of social structural um, and um, behavioral factors uh, contributing to gender differences in morbidity and mortality, um, with um, social class in relations being the more distal factors in social behavior and psychosocial factors being the more proximate factors. So most generally, um, women have lower socioeconomic status fewer time constraint associated with fewer job hours um, and more emotional distress, all of which disfavor female survival. Um, but um, there are clear occupational hazards, um, gender role socialization and cultural factors combined with behavioral components that disfavor male survival, particularly in terms of cigarette smoking, alcohol drinking, um, meat and fat consumption, violence, coronary prone behavioral patterns such as aggressiveness and competitiveness. On the other hand, physical activity, body weight and height, um, and other psychosocial factors like self-esteem and sen uh, sense of self-esteem and mastery uh, favor male survival. Now, um, controlling for the complete set of social behavioral factors results in little net change in sex difference in mortality. On balance, although a lot more factors, risk, uh, factors weigh against women, uh, the few that weigh against men are particularly powerful for mortality. So although the social behavioral model have been um, you know, quite powerful in uh, explaining gender differences in health and mortality, um, there remain striking sex differences, particularly as they unfold with individual aging, which are not explained at this time. And this has been underscored as the most compelling reason for considering alternative explanations by a report recently issued by the, uh, the Institute of medicine. Um, and so because the previous um, studies have collectively covered a wide range of social factors, we're left with the option of considering the old but powerful hypothesis termed by Verbrugge that biological aspects of sex differences matter. While we all say it makes sense, but um, not much has been done analytically to test this hypothesis in social science since then. Biologists have also been kept busy by this puzzle. There are a number of theories proposed on sex differences in survival um, that have received limited support empirically and not at all tested in population-based studies. Um, first, about medical research has um, shown marked sexual dimorphism in major physiological functions across species um, that are related to reproductive biology. Um, specifically, females in both human and a uh, animals show an elevated immune response and um, possibly higher immune competence, so a more active immune system potentially can explain the female longevity superiority. Um, and the uh, female sex origin, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, hormone estrogen um, also stimulate uh, immune responses and can protect females at the cellular level against um, um, a lot of um, chronic diseases, especially cardiovascular diseases. So, um, but because females have lower instance and mortality rates from many different kinds of diseases, it's hard to attribute differences in all these to immune functions.
um, recent research on aging has um, postulated two other hypotheses. The first one says that animals that show a reduction in the activity of the growth hormone um, and insulin-like growth factor one signaling cascade tend to be smaller and longer lived. Um, While well, this is seen in fruit flies, a roundworm, uh, mice, but not humans yet. Um, a second is that there may be sex emphasis in oxidative stress uh, production. Um, in rats and humans, there are studies that show that there are more measured oxidative stress damage to the DNA in the peripheral blood and some organs. Um, but similar findings have occurred from studies of mice in which um, males outlive females, which cast out on this hypothesis. And finally, genetic constitutional difference might favor females. Um, so the heterogametic sex that is the sex that has two different sex chromosomes in the in the mammals that would be the XY male uh, tend to be shorter lived whereas having two um, sex um, two X chromosomes may be advantageous um, and then also the um, telomere length is um, also genetically determined and is longer in women than men um, and longer telomere means slower cell aging but these have not been received uh, you know have not been consistently supported either um, like I said earlier um, in some animals like mice, um, golden hamster, um, guinea pigs, um, males live longer substantially than females which um, contradict the heterogametic sex hypothesis and also estrogenic one. Um, and a recent critical review of all evidence to date on the link between telomere length and aging um, shows no consistent support for um, the existence of this link. Now, so far we have two separate bodies of knowledge. One is based on animals and clinical data um, focusing on biological mechanisms of disease within um, individual organisms that are detached from social life experiences. And the other um, focus almost exclusively on social behavioral factors um, in population um, that lack uh, explicit measures of biological robustness. So in order really to understand this, um, to, un to understand biological mechanisms in the population, one uh, needs a multi-systems approach um, to examine the complex processes underlying sex differences across levels of organization, including the biology at the cellular, organ, developmental, and behavioral levels. This approach is very difficult to implement, but is absolutely mandatory to the understanding of multiple forces um, shaping the evolution of sex differences in physiology and behavior, and also to um, help more generally to understand um, problems arising from reciprocal interactions between a person's social and physical worlds. So to implement this approach, I propose an integrative explanatory framework with three aims. The first is to identify and establish sex differences in major aspects of biological structures and functions in a population. Um, and the second is to uh, then model how these differences, if they exist, contribute to sex differences in mortality. And then third, uh, more importantly, is to uh, discover the interconnections of biological parameters and social behavioral factors in these models to you know, understand how do social conditions get under the skin to shape sex-specific patterns of mortality. Now, um, very simply, the first part of the project is um, focusing on physiological basis of sex differences, and I'm just using the red arrows and boxes to uh, indicate the familiar social behavioral models, which is a highly, um, you know, simplified version. Um, the integrative model also uh, examines the physiological pathways, as indicated by the yellow links, and then also their interconnections with the social processes uh, in this um, model, um, indicated by the blue arrows. I will come back to this later. Um, and then uh, just a few words about genetic basis. Um, one really needs to be creative to study this because, in, um, like I said earlier, the uh, sex, sex chromosome composition in human um, is not a variable uh, within the species of humans. So um, 
the biodemographic approach examining age of expression of disease and mortality is a particularly useful strategy um, to detect the genetic component to um, sex differences in, in, in life expectancy. So essentially this is um, related to an ex uh, evolutionary based explanation for age related patterns of mortality and that is um, age specific death rates from inherited genetic disease which I call metararian diseases, which are named after the scientist Medawa, who first discovered them. Uh, the risk of death from these um, diseases should rise as the force of natural selection wanes. So if this is true, then the hypothesis that's testable with, de with demographic data is that the risk of death from these diseases should over time have an age distribution that are shifted toward the end of the um, reproductive period. And the age of expression of these diseases, like any biologically influenced trait, should show variation in genetically diverse populations. So if men die from such diseases at early ages than, at earlier ages than women, then there is a genetic uh, basis for um, longer female uh, life expectancy. Now to test this, one need to first determine um, the age distribution of mortality due to these diseases, which then require a review of a vast amount of medical literature and human genome project, uh, which will take time. So I will only show some results that um, are from the first part, um, part of the project on physiology. Can I just ask you a question? So you said that this is an evolutionary story, but you didn't really give the details. So the idea is that there's there's some evolutionary pressure for women to survive all the way through the reproductive period. And for men, not so much. That's implied. That's implied. Um, and also, you know, I can talk more about this in the, in, the, in the discussion period. It also has to do with the sex differences in um, the distribution of illness conditions. So females tend not to have as many X, X chromosome related recessive disorders than men. So that, that, will, um, that, that will play a role. Anyway, so, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> The first study examines the sex differences in um, and their age variations in um, exposures and vulnerabilities to dysregulation uh, in major regulatory systems uh, that are important uh, determinants of human longevity and also are directly affected by social factors. So the first one is um, tapping at innate immunity, which is indicated by systemic inflammation um, that has major ramifications for aging processes and strongly predicts mortality, which is indicated by an elevation of the circulating levels of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines in acute phase protein. The most prominent one is C-reactive protein, or CRP, uh, also interleukin-6 in fibrinogen and albumin. Um, a fat and glucose metabolism is increasingly being studied because it also modifies aging uh, synergistically with inflammation um, and is indicated by um, measures of anthropometry, body size, fat composition, and metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of, risk, uh, of vascular risk factors that share insulin resistance as a common pathophysiological um, mechanism. And also, um, the aging process is characterized by a progressive dysregulation of the homeostatic network and accelerated declines in functions across multiple systems. So we also look at the cumulative um, load of dysregulation through the allostatic load. So. Um, the, um, I mentioned earlier about the estrogenic hypothesis, which is purely you know, stemming from the biology literature, but there is a, de uh, a demographic implication of that, hi of that hypothesis, and that is um, there will be some um, post-reproductive change in the risks of physiological dysregulation because um, age-related increase for women should somehow accelerate after the um, age of menopause due to reduction of estrogen and increased um, abdominal fat storage, uh, but this is unlikely for men uh, whose fecundity declines relatively gradually.
So the data we use um, are from uh, ENHANCE, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. It was conducted at various points between 1988 and 2006. They used the multi-stage um, stratified sampling design and um, include representative cross-sectional samples uh, from non-institutionalized population with an oversample of older adults and minorities. Um, and um, the samples, we have up to 38,000, it varies a lot depending on covariates, um, who, uh, uh, people who age 17 and over who attended interview in the household, uh, clinical exam and lab tests, um, and who are also eligible, most of them are, for mortality follow-ups through 2006. This table, um, no need to look at all the numbers. Um, it's, it just summarizes uh, all um, biological biomarker uh, variables uh, we use for the study, including three for inflammation, um, eight for um, various metabolic fat and glucose um, metabolic factors, and three for other physiological functions that taps at lung function and renal function and a kind of um, aging-related amino, uh, amino acid homocysteine. Um, they each have their um, clinically defined high-risk cutout points. So based on these cutout points, we constructed also summary indices of um, the cumulative load uh, of inflammation that ranges from zero to three. Metabolic syndrome is based on a clinical definition, uh, meaning that those who have three or more out of the five designated um, metabolic risk factors will be those who have metabolic syndrome. And allostatic load, some of you may know, um, it's, it's, it's a, a summary indicator of all you know, 14 markers that, that, that are positive risk factors. So um, the results. I'm not showing the results for individual 14 markers. There are just too many of them. So I'm just showing the results for the um, summary indices. So um, the age trajectories of all individual as well as um, summary indices um, show a quadratic pattern, meaning that the risk of uh, physiological um, disorders increase with age, um, uh, but then level off in older ages. Um, sex differences, um, women um, have have an, uh, on average higher burden of inflammation, a heightened inflammatory responses than men, um, uh, but they have a, a slower rate of increase and this difference decrease in older age. Metabolic syndrome, men have close to four times higher odds than women, um, you know, in terms of, of um, on average, in terms of metabolic syndrome. Um, but this difference also decreases in old age, so this figure shows the predicted probability uh, that shows a crossover uh, of the um, probability at around the age of 75, after which um, females have higher probability. But before that, women are advantageous. Um, in terms of allostatic load, the results show a higher female um, average, uh, indicated by the white bars, um, and an increase in um, did I say a yeah, average, and an increase um, in, in, in the female excess uh, in postmenopausal ages. So um, in some, we see uh, that the female advantages in cardiovascular and metabolic functions um, decrease um, after menopause which seem to be consistent with the implication of the estrogenic hypothesis. Um, and we'll later uh, show how this might be linked to the reduction of sex mortality gaps in the second study. Now, um, controlling for social behavioral factors and covariates, we find that the differential exposures and vulnerabilities to social behavioral risk factors um, partially explain sex differences and their age patterns uh, in, in biological functions. So for example, this figure shows the associations between social integration and physiology. It shows that such association varies by sex and age. Um, lack of religious attendance, for instance, um, and in particular, is associated with more, high, more inflammation um, and um, higher odds of metabolic syndrome for older men than women. Um, whereas it's associated with higher allostatic load for older women.
what, what we're seeing here in that one when you say no religious attendance? Are we seeing Lack of religious. Or are we seeing only those? Ads ratio. These are the odds ratios of. Um, uh, oh, they're odds ratios. Odds ratio. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I should have explained odds ratio and their confidence. Where the compared to those. The comparison group. Is comparison. To attend. Yeah, they do attend, and this is absolutely no attendance. Um, it's you know these are the positive odds ratio, and, and the ones in the red boxes are the ones that uh, the odds ratios that are significant. So. And in terms of health behavior, in, the interesting uh, guy is uh, cigarette smoking. It's, um, it elevates, um, so I'm comparing uh, past and current smoker with uh, non-smoker, with never smoker. So you see for each group there are two bars. Um, and so what um, this is saying is that cigarette smoking elevates inflammation burden more for young women um, and older men and also increases uh, the odds of metabolic syndrome more for younger men. So taking these things together, they partially explain the larger female excess in inflammation and larger male excess in metabolic syndrome in younger ages and decreases in these um, excesses in older ages. So, um, and then the second study moves on to um, mortality analysis. So I mentioned earlier that the female's uh, advantage in longevity is widespread, but that is just only part of the picture. And that is the picture that's um, sort of um, been exclusively uh, f uh, focused on in, in all past research in, uh, on this topic, in, at least in demography. But that's only part of the picture. What's left is that um, the sex mortality gaps are actually anything but constant. So there are a lot of variations in these gaps that are important for um, the, you know, they're, they're clues to the, un, uh, to the origins and mechanisms of sex differences in mortality that have been overlooked, and this is what this study focuses on. So um, starting again from the animal studies, um, they have shown that the female longevity superiority is not pervasive, right? There are species in which, you know, um, males live longer. So, um, but nor is it constant within species. So, um, for example, the uh, experimental data of 600,000 met flies, uh, which are summarized here in terms of mortality ratio, show the ambiguity of, this, of the male-female longevity um, difference. So the solid um, black line here shows the mortality ratio of male to female when it's under um, this line of one, it means lower um, male mortality risk. So males have um, lower mortality risk in the first 20 days of life, um, higher uh, between 20 and 70 days of life, and approximately equal um, in uh, older ages. And in this case, in this species, um, males have longer life expectancy. So that's age difference, and the sex differentials also vary um, largely by cause of death. The data on cause-specific mortality are very important because they provide detailed information on physiological um, pathways, um, mechanisms by which the age changes occur. So um, using the Enhance more, um, Follow-up data, we also calculated the um, mortality uh, rate ratio, and we locked them. So anything that's uh, above the red line of zero is um, uh, positive. That means higher male mortality rates. So we do see higher male mortality rates for total death and for causes uh, including circulatory diseases, infectious diseases, pneumonia and flu, and external causes for all age groups. Uh, for cancer, which I dissect into lung cancer and other cancers, um, for um, younger ages, females actually have higher mortality rates. In terms of age changes, um, we see this decreases in um, the male excess for overall mortality and um, non-cancer related mortality, but for cancer, the ratios increase with age. So next we um, did Cox regression analysis to find out to what extent these observed patterns are um, uh, statistically significant or just um, happen by chance. And this um, is the corresponding hazards ratio figure. I'll walk you through, it's a very busy graph. Um, so again, um, 
there are two major findings. The first one concerns sex differences. So within uh, um, age groups, sex differences in mortality are significant for some cause but not others. For instance, um, the hazards ratio, well all these um, hazards ratio adjust for um, a lot of other covariates. So um, the adjusted hazards ratio for total mortality is not significant for the middle age, not significant for younger and middle age for lung cancer, not significant for older age for infectious diseases, not significant for younger and um, premenopausal ages in pneumonia and flu, and old age for external causes. And the second finding is with, uh, with regard to age changes in sex mortality gaps. You see decreases in the ratios uh, for uh, total mortality and those causes of death that are closely directly related to cardiovascular functions and immune functions. Right? Uh, circulatory disease, infectious flu, pneumonia. Um, the external cause, the, there's a lack of age, um, significant age change and reduction in mortality gaps uh, uh, by sex for external causes um, of mortality, which indirectly support the biological basis because um, reproductive functions, cardiovascular um, and immune functions don't seem to have obvious bearings on exogenous forces of mortality. Um, Cancer, however, is an exception. There's this increase with age in the gaps, um, and, and this is a topic of uh, another uh, separate analysis we're doing. So um, then um, to see how various social and physiological processes operate in different periods of development, we also examine in the, in the same models the adjusted hazards ratios for these other covariates. And so generally, um, social um, and demographic variables um, are more important in younger ages. For instance, uh, the race effect is significant for total and cancer mortality. The educational gradient in mortality is significant for total cause. Um, and the effects of uh, marital status are significant for total and circulatory diseases. Um, uh, behavior and lifestyle factors are, are, are important across ages and uh, causes of death. The, the most prominent factor is smoking. Um, and um, alcohol use and physical activity have um, also significant effects, but um, not as pronounced as smoking. Um, and about physiological dysregulation and biomarkers, they are more important for older ages. And so this um, figure summarizes those markers that are significant in the models uh, for um, the age of um, 65 plus. And uh, so they include the inflammation markers, um, blood pressure, uh, other um, cardiovascular and, and metabolic factors, and also renal functions. An exception, interestingly, um, is the diastolic blood pressure, which is only significant and has a huge effect in younger ages only. Uh, so um, this table um, is important. It summarizes the hazards ratio of sex difference, um, age uh, difference, and the um, age changes in sex differences in terms of sex by age interaction effect without and with adjustment of all the covariates. So I'm only showing the results for all cause in circulatory disease um, mortality. And so adjusting for a number of other factors, um, largely reduce the age coefficient, which makes sense, and also completely eliminate the significance level for the sex by age interaction effect for circulatory disease, meaning that um, differential exposures to social status, um, behaviors, physiological changes, and morbidity conditions um, you know, uh, um, explain the postmenopausal reduction in the sex mortality gaps completely in the case of circulatory diseases, um, but only um, partially and um, sometimes minimally for other causes of death. Um, moving on to the third study, 
far we have examined the mortality effects of social factors in biological functions independent of each other. Um, but given the findings from the first analysis that show some connections between measures of the two domains, uh, we next explore how um, the, these interconnections um, uh, relate to sex differences in mortality. So, so this study um, uh, then um, focuses on one potential physiological pathway by which social relationships affect mortality and the sex differences in this process. Now, um, rats, well, we, we can talk about rats, but um, I would like to first talk about sociologist tradition. So um, dating back to Durkheim's um, classical work linking um, social context and the risk of suicide. Right? Um, a large body of, of um, research has shown social ties, social embeddedness um, are beneficial for optimal social and physical functioning and also survival. Um, recent um, research using animal models is also catching on um, and al they also show um, uh, pretty much the same kind of message although through rats, not humans. But very interestingly they show that um, Social isolation and hypervigilance in rats um, lead to um, higher incidence rates of cancer, accelerate aging, and shorten lifespan. So the top panel here shows that um, the isolated female rats develop mammary cancers and tumors at younger ages than others who are randomly assigned to live in groups. And the lower um, panel of the picture here shows that on the left uh, is the female rat that's socially isolated. At the same day of age, this one has developed multiple mammary tumors, whereas this one is intact. And this, um, there are other rats. This is just not a single case um, that show highly statistically significant um, results. So basically what this means is that um, the evidence for the links between social relation and morbidity and mortality continues to grow. Um, biophysiological mechanisms underlying these links, however, are just beginning to be discovered. The hypothesis of interest here to this study is that social isolation can lead to a chronic activation of um, the physiological stress response system uh, that in turn increases the mortality risks. So um, very few studies, um, previous studies, examine mortality data. They're very difficult to obtain. Uh, but there are studies that show um, health effects of social isolation in relation to inflammation uh, in the context of cardiovascular disease and cancers. Now the findings are mixed. Um, and in case of cancer, uh, the studies are largely uh, restricted to cl uh, small clinical samples of female cancer patients. Um, in addition, there may be interesting sex differences. So um, biobehavioral responses to stress um, are sexually dimorphic and they have a neuroendocrine basis. So um, a large body of animal literature has shown that the, the males um, display the classical fight or flight response that in females is modulated to become attend and befriend um, response that is likely to have evolved um, to adapt to the demands of the maternal roles. And um, this proposed difference in animals can um, have implications for uh, sex differences in stress-related disorders in human populations. Um, and, um, and also there are studies that recently show that um, the links between social isolation and inflammation um, are different in male and females. For instance, um, for chronically socially isolated isolated female rats, they uh, show a more robust inflammatory responses than male uh, counterparts and they also show faster wound healing. Uh, which is then consistent with the observation in human that um, uh, the uh, effect of social isolation on, on mortality is different in men and women uh, with older men who have lower levels of social integration um, being more vulnerable to um, um, morbidity and mortality. Um, and then so to examine these ideas with data, we looked at um, the only 
um, social relationship uh, variable in NHANES, um, which is the Berkman's Social Network Index. And we compared the degrees of social isolation and integration uh, between men and women uh, for the two age groups. Zero to one value indicates social isolation, and increasing value in the indicate um, uh, means that that person is more socially integrated. So we see that um, largely um, women are seem to be less socially isolated and more socially integrated, but none of these um, differences are, are significant. The only thing that is significant, interestingly, is uh, for the older ages, uh, for the highest degree of social integration, but in this case, the sex difference is reversed, with older men being more uh, fully socially integrated than women. And then this um, table summarizes then shows the um, associations between social isolation and inflammation indicated by the three individual marker and also the um, cumulative index. So we see that the social isolation is associated with a significant um, increase in the odds of higher risk um, markers of inflammation at, uh, for uh, CRP and fibrinogen especially um, and also for um, the cumulative burden of, of inflammation inflammation and these odds ratios are um, larger and more significant for men than women. And then moving on to mortality, it shows that um, you know, without doubt that there are strong effects of social isolation on mortality for both sexes, um, more so for the older age groups, and that's why for um, most of the causes here I'm showing the older age results. Um, these odds ratios are larger for men than women um, for all cause and circulatory disease. Uh, for cancer, um, the only um, significant result is restricted to the middle-aged men, which also there's a large effect there. Um, so adjusting, these are only adjusting for age and race. Adjusting also for inflammation shows that these um, um, hazard ratios have been um, attenuated. Uh, meaning that the effects have been um, mediated to, to some extent and for the, for the total cause it's um, mediated for both uh, but more for women interestingly. For circulatory disease um, it's mediated more for men um, and for cancer uh, adjusting for inflammation completely um, explained the social isolation effect and we also um, uh, adjusting for other uh, additional covariates um, further reduce the, so the uh, hazard its ratio for social isolation for sure, but uh, the, for the additional reduction um, after adding inflammation is also significant. So in sum, what have we learned? The findings here, I think, um, well, we see that um, sex differences are more variant than uh, conventionally assumed. So it really challenged the um, assumption implicit in many previous studies on this topic that the sex differences in mortality um, apply throughout the life course in magnitude or direction. It's really important, I think, to study this in a context of aging and the life course um, Jim Carrey, uh, who's uh, a pioneer biodemographers, who've um, also studied this in animals, uh, they um, postulate, um, they argued this a long time ago, which I think should be given more attention to, is that future research focusing on causal mechanisms underlying convergence, crossover, and divergence of male-female mortality rates with age will be more important to understanding gender differences in aging than will a continuing quest to demonstrate the universality of a female longevity advantage. And second, um, the age variations in cause-specific sex mortality gaps suggest a physiological basis for um, sex difference that can be tested by comparisons of um, trajectories of physiological functions between men and women. And the post-reproductive change in these um, um, functions can then you know, be linked to sex mortality differences, uh, but we found that this is true for uh, some but not all causes of death. And social and physiological mechanisms underlying the sex mortality gaps also vary by age and cause of death. So, and, and their joint effects are most pronounced for, for um, cardiovascular disease mortality, um, much less well understood for other causes of death.
And the study of the interplay between social and physical factors um, further shows how social gets under the skin and the sex differences in this process. Um, and so we see that the mortality effects of social isolation is, um, are larger for older men, um, which are partly um, attributed to their heightened inflammatory responses to chronic stress imposed by isolation. So um, I don't know how much time I, I have, but I would like to talk about limitations of the study and cautions for interpretation. I have time? Okay. So uh, very importantly, it's, it's important for me to point out that um, some analysis are based on cross-sectional um, um, data. Then it means that the um, age trajectories of uh, you know, uh, risk factors and physiological functions then represent um, distributions by age um, of the um, surviving population from cohorts born earlier. Right, and then so um, the the age increase in um, acceleration of the physiological dysregulation and also mortality are reduced somewhat by selective survival. So um, it's important to um, uh, you know substantiate or uh, corroborate the findings using longitudinal data in the future, and also um, the statistical power for the calculation of the age change in, in, in mortality rates are is largely limited by the small number of deaths uh, from survey-based data. And this is also very important, and this is especially the case for cause-specific mortality. And the measurement, um, NHANES is one of the surveys um, nationally uh, that, that has this sort of um, a large array of biomarkers uh, that are uh, that were collected in assay that's sort of set up the, the golden standard of algorithms, but still a lot of um, other kind of biomarkers that tap uh, different aspects of physiology are not included. It would be beneficial for future research to include a broader spectrum of markers to uh, for a more comprehensive characterization of, of this matter. And um, some prominent examples could be um, you know, other kind of pro-inflammatory cytokines that are uh, very, um, that are more um, cause of death specific, and such as those for cancer. Um, and also um, the uh, physiological stress response markers regulated by the HPA axis and sympathetic nervous system. Um, um, I'm kind of a little disappointed to find no um, significant effects of social isolation for females, uh, f for women. Um, and I kind of hope that that's really because that we haven't got the perfect measure of social relationship. Um, so in the future, I think um, the next step for us is to get more, more multiple dimensions of um, social relationship because um, so s we have looked at the, the quantity in terms of so the size of social network but um, there are other aspects that looked at the quality of the relationship and the function of the relationship and the uh, perceived support uh, uh, um, quality of the support one derived from these relationships and these are the kinds of um, variables that tend to have larger stress reducing effects and, um, the and they also have larger female advantages so, and also um, cross-cultural comparison is a must uh, in order to sort out the nature of the um, interplay between um, social environment and physiology. So comparing U.S. with, um, say, Oops, pre-modern uh, small-scale populations who resemble our past and, uh, uh, not, and, and modern non-Western populations um, I think is going to um, be tremendously helpful and informative. Um, um, to conclude, this is um, supported by NIA K01 grant and the Cancer Research Funds at UNC. And um, I think I'm very thankful for the mentorship of Martha McClintock and Kathy Harris, um, who are uh, both pioneers in transdisciplinary research on health um, and uh, um, great mentors and role models. Um, Jay Oshansky, Carlos Mendes de Leon, um, uh, and, and um, Linda Waite, uh, also very helpful for um, questions related to biodemography and epidemiology of aging. Um, and um, biomarkers in population surveys. And my student um, and postdoc helped a lot with the analysis. Let's stop here.